But a bit of a shock created here yesterday in an interview, again related to that story, with a former senior Conservative and indeed Minister, Sir Alan Duncan, in which he made a series of disobliging comments about many people at the top part of government and made certainly allegations about how some of them could even be in the pockets of the Israelis. You'll have heard this story covered, and you've probably seen it in most of your newspapers this morning. LBC's Henry Riley joins me in the studio to remind you of the initial interview and look at some of the political aftermath. Henry. Nick, you mentioned Sir Alan Duncan, a senior figure. He's not a sort of boisterous backbencher who's good copy. He really was a senior figure within the Conservative Party, an MP for nearly 30 years. He was in Michael Howard's shadow cabinet, was a Minister of State under David Cameron and Theresa May. Under Theresa May, he was actually Boris Johnson's deputy in the Foreign Office when he was Foreign Secretary. Now, he was on to talk to you yesterday about why, in his view, we should stop selling arms to Israel, but, of course, landed himself in hot water when he made a slew of allegations. He called for Lord Pickles and Lord Pollack, both senior members of the CFI, the Conservative Friends of Israel, to be removed from the Lords for exercising the interests of another country and, quotes, doing the bidding of Netanyahu. This is what he told you yesterday. The Conservative Friends of Israel has been doing the bidding of Netanyahu bypassing all proper processes of government to uh, exercise undue influence at the top of government. So what you have is a lot of people now sitting around Rishi Sunak who are giving him appalling advice. Uh, Let's start with the head of um, uh, CFI, or has been for many years, Lord Pollack. In my view, I think he should be removed from the Lords because he is exercising uh, the interests of another country, not that of the parliament in which he sits. Joined, I have to say, by Lord Pickles. They're the sort of Laurel and Hardy who should be pushed out together. But he didn't stop there. He then called for Priti Patel to be reinvestigated over her trip to Israel. He said Cabinet Ministers Michael Gove, Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden, didn't think that settlements were problematic, and then called for the Security Minister Tom Tugendhat to be sacked for not believing in international law. Now, you mentioned, Nick, it caused a bit of a stir. The Jewish Leadership Council described his comments as an anti-Semitic trope. The Board of Deputies of British Jews said they were disgraceful, while the campaign against anti-Semitism have called for for Sir Alan to be expelled from the party. I spoke with a senior Jewish MP as well, Andrew Percy, who told me the comments were reckless, ignorant and dangerous, calling Sir Alan a ridiculous character. Now, you referenced that we were the first to reveal this on LBC, that he had been investigated by the Conservative Party, is being investigated. They told us he's been told in writing now that his party membership is under investigation. Although the first he knew of this, Nick, was seemingly when I asked him for comments, so he wasn't aware that he was under investigation investigation until that point. Now, what happens next? It's likely to last a few weeks, I'm told, the investigation. It could end up in him facing expulsion. The government very coy on this. You spoke earlier with the Exchequer Secretary to the Treasury, Gareth Davies, who refused to be drawn on whether he should face expulsion. I certainly don't agree with those comments, and you're right. I've uh, myself visited uh, Israel, but I also, with them, uh, visited uh, the Palestinian Authority. Were his comments anti-Semitic? I'm not in a position to comment on uh, whether it was or wasn't. He's under investigation by the Conservative Party. Should he be drummed out if you have the powers? That is a a matter for for other uh, people in the party, not me, I'm afraid. But he's not one with many friends left in the Conservative Party, Nick, to be candid. One slightly gleeful MP, former minister, texted me to say, no wonder he was never made a cabinet minister. Sir Alan Duncan can now kiss goodbye to that peerage he's been so desperate for. Henry Riley reporting. Let's bring you the conversation specifically on the idea of anti-Semitism or not. John, now Lord Mann. Now, Lord Mann is an independent peer and is the UK government's advisor on anti-Semitism. And I'll start. I know you well enough to call you John. John, you'll have certainly heard the comments or read them now. Were they anti-Semitic? Morning to you. Yeah, well, of course they were, and I mean, absurdly so. And I, it's almost as if uh, Alan Duncan's trying to get himself expelled um, from the Conservative Party. He seems to be digging deeper. And uh, it's... I mean, if we take an example, I mean, Eric Pickles... I know Eric Pickles very well. And if you want to attack Eric Pickles politically, you could you could call him an old style Tory or a Thatcherite Tory. I think that would be accurate. But um but Eric Pickles isn't somebody who's even visiting Israel very often, speaking about Israel very often. His work in the last five years has been on the Holocaust. And he heads up our delegation to the International Holocaust Alliance, does so very well and spends 
incredibly large amounts of time on issues like reparations from the Holocaust and other such matters, Holocaust education, and trying to improve that. And that's what he does. And I know that because I have to work closely with him. And I see exactly what he's doing. In fact, he's at an entire conversation at the moment doing precisely that. So the idea that he's in some way a stooge for a foreign power is factually nonsense. But it's, I mean, it's deeply disingenuous to even suggest it. Where are you on the idea of the suspension or possibly permanent halting of arms sales to Israel, John? Well, and I've heard your your your, your comments, uh, Nick, on that, um, and I, I saw what Andrew Neil did. There's a there's been a shift of opinion, but I'd like to see the government legal advice. Um, it's my view, come is, on, John. I I can't remember. They, they they'll fight shy of that, won't they? Well, they, they, I'm I'm not sure they will in this case because it it determines whether or not we're breaking international law, and I think we should operate within the law. I think that's our responsibility as uh, parliamentarians, as politicians. I think, I think there's inc- if if Israel doesn't shift to the pressure that Biden and the Americans are putting on them, uh, the the call for offensive weaponry um, rather than defensive weaponry to uh, be stopped from being sold will become the norm and become irresistible. Um, the the balls in Israel's court to get its act together in terms of how it's acting and how the aid is, or rather isn't, getting through. And they haven't got much time on that to get their act together. They haven't done. And uh, if the Biden pressure doesn't pay off, then we'll see that happening all over the world. Lastly, John, you won't need reminding. This weekend marks six months since the October 7 Hamas attacks. What is your abiding memory? What shocked you or surprised you the most, John? The the scale of it was the only shock. I knew the moment it was happening that this was as major as anything in our lifetime. And, of course, if those hostages were released this week, then the pressure on Israel to stop the war would lead to it being stopped. 